Welcome to this webinar. Um, this is on using the global learning platform and it's a guide for students and also for their parents and carers so that they can see um, how the platform works. My name's Julia Fogelin. I'm a member of the solution specialist team and we've created a series of webinars for teachers and this is one especially for parents and students students just to give you a feel of how the uh, program works. This is just a short 20 minute video, um, but it'll help you to see your way around the program. So first of all, we're going to look at some of the important elements of the global learning platform. And then we're going to go on to see what students need to do today so they can identify the tasks that teachers have set them. Then we're going to go on and look at how we communicate with our teachers and also with our uh, fellow classmates. And then finally, we're going to have a look at assignments and the assignment tools that go alongside them. So let's look first of all at some of the important elements. And this screen's great because it's just numbered so we can go through the items. So at the top of the page here, number one, um, we've got a hamburger icon. And that can be used to open and close the menu system, the contents below here, um, so that you can use it to search and look around the program. Here we've got number two, the uh, course content, and you'll be able to see that it's all numbered in exactly the same way as the book. So if you want to click on lesson two, you just click on it, it'll open it up for you. And the teacher will identify where you need to be and how you're going to uh, work through those activities. If you have a look at number three up here, we've got a little house and this is the home icon. And this will take you back to your main screen. So if you've got more than one program um, on the global learning platform, then you'll be able to navigate your way around and find that. So for example, if you're working on science dimensions, you'll be able to find it there. If you're working on interliterature, which is the screen that we have open here, you'll be able to navigate to interliterature as well. So all the programs you're working on will help you. There's another icon here, um, which is number four, and this um, we tend to call the kebab icon because it looks a bit like a kebab. And uh, you'll be able to see all of the uh, different elements that relate to the course that you're working on uh, right now. And we're going to have a look at some more of that later on. On number five here at the bottom, you can see a couple of arrows. It's pretty intuitive. You know that you can use this to navigate from one page to the next page. And then at the bottom of the screen, you've got two possibilities here. One of them is Explore, and we're looking at the program in Explore. But also, if we click on Assignments, that'll take us to any assignments um, that you have been given, and you'll be able to look at an overview of those, assi those assignments just by clicking on there. OK, so let's look at it from a practical perspective and think about what you need to work on today. So here we are, we've got an assignment overview and this will tell us where we're going in today's lesson or what we're going to do after the lesson is completed. So this particular section I pointed out to you just on the last screen is the assignments tab and that will take you to the assignments overview page, which we can see here on the screen. So the assignment overview helps us to see what we've already done, but what we have to do and what date it's um, due in on. So we can see that eight days ago, there were two tasks to do here and that you have done those two tasks. And you've also been able to put an emoji in if you feel like it to see uh, so that your teacher can see what you thought about the task. Um, you can also see what you've got to do next. So this has been um, uh, shown in another colour here, and we can see if we look at it that it's a, a unit one pretest and it's reading comprehension. And you can see that the student this was assigned to has already done that task. And you can also see how you got on. So your grade is going to be shown to you here in this table so you can see um, how you achieved in that. So if you tick, click on um, a title, uh, of the assignment, it'll take you directly to that page of the course. So if you see that you've got something done like uh, this particular one, 
where you haven't started it, all you need to do is click on that title and it'll take you to the task that you need to do or the piece. In this case, it's a video that you need to watch. OK, um, this burger icon at the top will enable you to open and close the course content and then you'll be able to have more screen time, uh, screen space rather, if you're um, looking at a particular video. So this one is a text in focus video. So sometimes it's more interesting to make it full screen so you can concentrate on it. OK, so this is an overview of what you've done, what you have maybe just completed or at what you're going to do in the future. So there's a, a mapping document there so that you've got a good feel for where you are. We have a look at the next page. We can see um, if there are any special instructions from your teacher. So let's have a look at number one. We'd find our assigned resources in Explore. So you, you remember on the previous page, it said if you want to look at the exercise that your teacher has set you, then click on it. And this is what we've done. We've clicked on that one. Now it takes us to the assignment that we're going to do. So we look to see if our teachers left any special instructions for us by clicking on the icon here. And this will tell us what the teacher wants us to do. Uh, our teacher might want us to find some extra information or do a little bit of research. It depends. So it's always worth clicking on this to see if there are some specific instructions. Otherwise, you might spend a lot of time working on something and then find that it's not actually what you were supposed to be doing. So it's always good to check. There may not be something in there, but usually there will be. In section three here, we can see uh, that there is some read aloud audio there. So some of these resources have read aloud in them and um, the audio will read the text aloud for you and it highlights the text as it goes along. So that's quite nice if you want to listen and read at the same time. Uh, the paragraphs are always going to be numbered and a speaker icon will pop up um, when you hover over the text to let you know that there is audio embedded. You just click on that icon to start the audio and you can also click on it to stop it if you want to. Um, if we look at number four here, we can see that in some places um, there are instructions uh, to highlight uh, that are highlighted here. And this time uh, you can highlight in the digital text. So your options are to highlight within the print version or copy and paste and make notes in the notes and discussion board for this page. And if we have a look up here, number five, we can see this is where we would add some notes. And sometimes this is used by the teacher as a running conversation with the students. So you might want to add a note here. Maybe there's something you don't understand, or maybe you want to make a comment on what you've been working on. You may find something particularly interesting, or you may have found out something that you want to share um, with other people in your group. You can see at the top of the page here, we've got a little red dot, a uh, little red square here with a tick in it. And this shows you that this is something that has to be done for today. When you've completed the task, you've submitted it or you've um, worked on it, then you can click on this arrow and it will turn to green to show your teacher that you've actually done and done this piece of work, it's completed. OK, so let's have a look here. So there are different types of assessments within the material and the different types of activities. New teacher can assign all sorts of different activities for you to do. Um, and you can take part in this. You can do them. You can check it when you have finished it. You can also select an emoji. So there are lots of different ones. If you enjoyed it, you might want to let your teacher know. If you didn't enjoy it, you might want to let your teacher know. If you are a bit confused, possibly, you might want to communicate this as well. So there are lots of different emojis there that you can use if you like. Um, and here we've got uh, an online discussion that's already started on this particular page and um, the students can contribute towards that. So you'll be able to see that in your version. Um, when you've completed, as I say, you click this small square with a tick in it and that lets your teacher know that you've completed it. And this is what it looks like here on the right hand side of the screen underneath number four. 
Okay, let's move along now because um, especially now at a distance, it's great to be able to communicate um, with our with the teacher and with each other. So let's have a look at some communication aspects of the global learning platform. So each page, as we mentioned, um, there is a notes and discussion button. And here's a better picture now of uh, a discussion between the teacher, Ms. Layla, and the students. We've got Amira and Salma here and Sarah Patel. They are all uh, adding comments here. And uh, it's a, a great area for people to work together. Um, sometimes it's difficult if everyone's on audio to hear what people say. So um, a notes and discussion board is quite a useful way of contributing uh, to the lesson without interrupting the flow of the lesson. And of course, for many people, this is a, a format that you're quite used to. It's something that we do all the time with our mobile phones. So have a look into this discussion board if it's lit, lit up because your teacher is probably uh, wanting to start a discussion between um, the class, uh, the students and herself in order to maybe sometimes clarify that people understood or alternatively um, to see what people's opinions uh, are on particular elements of the work that they're working on. So if you want to add a comment, you just click on the add comment section underneath the bit that it applies to and then you'll be able to share your comments with um, everyone else in the group. Um, you can also make a comment as well and you can ask for a class discussion on the board. So you might find something that um, you feel is uh, a bit ambiguous, you might want to share it with the class or you may want to ask for some help from your uh, fellow students or you may want to work uh, in a group on a particular aspect of the uh, programme. So you can do all of these things, however, um, your teacher can see everything. Uh, so you need to uh, make sure that, of course, it's appropriate for classwork and of course the teacher has the right to delete or make private anything that they don't think is appropriate um, to share out with the whole group. So each, uh, make, each note that you make is private until you choose to share it. So this is how you could share um, content with each other if you're working on a specific project or if you want to um, ask for help from one of your students. But remember, of course, the teacher can see everything. Okay, the um, the three kebab, uh, the three uh, dot icon up up here, which is we call the kebab icon, um, enables you to share, edit, or delete the comments that you've made. Okay, so let's have a look here um, for our teachers' message board for the whole class. So um, this course cover page is used as a central location for your teacher and you can click on the course title to go to the cover page. And also your school may be using Zoom or WebEx or uh, Google Classroom or some other platform to help you join your teachers in video conferencing when you're um, schooling from home. So you may use this in conjunction with something else. I'm uh, using a PowerPoint here with WebEx, which is very much like Zoom. Uh, so you can see that it's quite easy to bring in um, not only uh, conversations between people, but also um, share visual images from the course materials as well um, on a screen that you share. OK, so final thing here, let's look at assignment and assessment tools. And here we've got our um, assignment uh, page here. We, this is the one that we looked at before. This is our assigned notebook. And uh, here we've got an assigned notebook task that, um, for the students. So that might be homework that teachers have assigned for you. It could be, as we saw before, please watch a video, or it could be read this piece of text. So it doesn't necessarily need to be homework, but it could be homework as well. Um, it may be just a task that the teacher wants you to, uh, to do. So you'll be asked to do it. You'll be asked to uh, download a file, maybe fill it out, save it, and then upload it again in order to uh, send it to your teacher. So it could be uh, something that you are actually going to be uh, physically working on and then you'll upload it back onto um, the programme. So if we have a look here, um, 
this is a um, specific example here called a film critics notebook and the file upload will appear as a link. So we can see that this is the task. This is the notebook task that we're going to do. We do it and then we go on and we make use of normal edit editing tools that we're familiar with from Word. And then we can create the page and we could even um, add images or a video as well if we wanted to. Um, this program is um, progressing and developing all the time. So soon you'll be able to uh, drag and drop a file into um, the appropriate place as well. That's not available right now, but it won't be very long before it is. And then once you've completed that, uh, you can submit your work to your teacher and it will go into your teacher's inbox, uh, inbox. And like before, you would click the green square to show that you have completed that piece of work. OK, so let's have a look at the editing tools and how we can add an image to an online assignment. So all the editing tools and the text editing tools are available now to use. Um, so if we want to add an image into the piece of work, we click here to open the image in the properties pop up box and we need to have the image on our computer or we might be able to uh, cut and paste it if we wanted to. We can click the upload tab if it's not already open. So if you have it as a file in your computer, um, you can use this to upload it. Uh, you're going to choose your file. You can select it from the files that you have on your computer um, and then you can click um, over here. Uh, to add your image to the cloud-based server. So it may take a minute, but when it's done, it'll automatically open um, the image in the information tab. Now we can uh, look at our image and make it responsive. So if we want to resize it, we can. We can change uh, the width to a percentage uh, rather than using the fixed width. So these are all things that everybody's familiar with from using with Word. So it's very intuitive when you start to use it yourself and you can work out quite easily how to put things on. Um, so if you want to change it, if you look at it and you think, no, actually, I want some text in there. This is this image is too big. Then you can double click on the image and go into properties and adjust it exactly how you would like it. You can save it as a draft while you're working on it. Or if you're happy with everything you've done, then you're going to publish it and then you can send it off to your teacher. OK, um, sometimes teachers are going to send you assignments, so they'll th send you things to read. They'll send you uh, videos to watch. They'll ask you to contribute to the program with materials, uh, but also sometimes they're going to ask you to take an assessment online. Uh, so here we go. We've got a quiz here. And um, we're going to look in the uh, assignments tab. Remember, this is how we find them at the bottom of the screen. We can see assignments and explore. Explore is the program. Assignments are the tests that you're going to do. And we're going to click on the assessment as we did before to open it up. And then when you go to the assessment, it'll show you three buttons. And here you go. So we've got not yet started, start and closed. And um, your teacher will have given you a preset time probably to complete the assessment. So you'll have a start and an end time quite often. When you click start, you'll enter the assessment and your time will begin. And if we have a look on the right hand side of the screen here, we can see a small clock at the top and that shows the remaining time that you have to complete the assessment. Now, this is very useful if you're practicing for high stakes assessment, because you know that when you take an assessment, you've only got a limited amount of time to do it in. So in this way, it helps you practice and your teacher will have given you a generous amount of time uh, to work on this. So you'll see how much time you've got. And when you have finished your assessment, uh, in this case, the quiz, then you can submit it by clicking on submit at the bottom of the screen. So thanks very much for your time. Bye bye.